morning, Monday morning, bright and early, and I am heading out for my piano lesson, which will be a bit longer this week because I missed last week because of my cold. So I will be back to chat with you a little bit later. Well, I'm back from piano. Uh, gosh, that was a tough lesson. We had, uh, my new music had arrived and there's me thinking we'd just look at maybe one piece. We looked at both a lot, a lot of the way through, as well as looking at the piece that I've been working on. So <clears throat> I'm a little bit sort of foggy now. Uh, but it was great. It was good. So the rest of the day, uh, I have some things planned. I am going to wash my car. I will put a bit, bit of before footage in here from Saturday at the uh, the hop farm when we went to the Christmas fair. It was very boggy. And when I got home, I saw just how dirty my car was. So I'm gonna put a clip in about now. And I, so I'm going to wash the car. Uh, I've got some ironing to do. Hey, and what else was I going to do? Some knitting, obviously. Uh, try and get Henry out for a walk today before it gets dark. And yeah, a bit more pootling around. I'm obviously going to chat a bit later about some um, my favourite classic literature books. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about classics today and then go on to talk about some different genres, perhaps through the next two weeks, if that works for people. Uh, I've got to remember that this is only a vlog, though, if it's not actually a podcast. But never know what, what might come of it. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, I just need to... I. <laughs> I filmed lots of different bits yesterday. Obviously I was filming the, the cleaning of my kitchen and I filmed a segment about the, the few bits that I purchased at the Midwinter Fair on Saturday and I completely left it out. I completely left out the bit where you would have met the character that you saw at the end of yesterday's vlog. So um, I'm gonna insert that bit next to make sure that that comes in um, so this was obviously filmed yesterday and then I will uh, continue on with today. Um, quick bit of backstory. When my sister had her children, she has two girls, and I became known as Auntie Boo because I used to play peekaboo all the time with them. Actually, I used to jump at them and go, boo! Um, but <laughs> peekaboo sounds so much more elegant, doesn't it? And so I used to play Boo and I became known as Auntie Boo. And that stuck. So I've always been, my nieces are grown women now and I'm still Auntie Boo, which I love. And also, as they grow up through the years, my children's friends also called me Auntie Boo. Uh, the close friends, you know, um, or Mama Boo, actually. That's right, I was Mama Boo to them. So, and my parents call me Boo now. Hannah is oftentimes known by me actually as Baby Boo. Um, and yes, it does sound something like something out of Barney, but you know. Um, and so yesterday, okay, look what I found. Not only is it a bunny, Look at that. She even has trainers, sparkly gold. <coughs> <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I thought, how could I? How could I not buy it? So she has a cape. Did I just say that? Uh, anyway, she has a cape. 
She has her superhero red sparkly headband. And she is awesome. So the brand is called, is actually called oddboo.com. And they had a whole load. And what was even better is that they do baby versions, miniature versions, and they were all in pajamas. And they were called Baby Boo. Can you believe that I didn't get one for Hannah? Um, because it was a treat enough by myself, this. Um, but <clears throat> she had a whole range. You'll see from the vlog yesterday, they had all knitwear and she had little raincoats for them and all of this. So Penny and Irina and I, I'm not sure if Irina knows this yet, but we're going to knit some clothes for Super Boo. She needs to have, she certainly needs to have a hat. We thought maybe some leg warmers. Quite cool, isn't it? And Penny was also concerned that she has the rabbit, not Penny. Um, so we might knit or, or sew a little pair of frilly bloomers. But when you think she can sit there. What? Um, that I'm known as Boo. I have a sign at home as well, a, a wooden plaque that says Tickety Boo, because in the UK, one of the slightly more um, old fashioned saying, you say everything's tickety boo, meaning that everything's good, everything's going well. So I tend to look for things with boo on them and this was just perfect. needs to send help because not only am I washing my car I'm actually washing our windows what is all that about surely I've got better things to do with my time I've just noticed that Henry's side is bloody and his back leg is bloody and what has happened and my heart has sunk because he's cut the tip of his tail and he hasn't done that for a couple of years but if you imagine a paintbrush dipped in watery red paint being like that it most likely means hopefully if I usually if I wash it in very cold water it kind of uh, stems the bleeding. Otherwise the house will become uh, the set for the next CSI because there will be blood everywhere. Okay. This is very tricky work. Look, over in the corner, you've got to turn around and say hello. Kevin's hello. back. Kevin's back. Hello. You're a natural. Look at this paper. Just tell us, hang on, turn around, turn around. Just oh. tell me quickly yes. what you were just telling me about your knitting. Oh yes, at, when I was at uh, secondary school, Yeah. Uh, we had a knitting class and I was in it with cookery. And um, I with turned cookery? Out to, and cookery, yeah, I was thinking that's what I did, remember? 
And that, so I was actually like uh, the best, best at the knitting, apparently, if I remember. What right. did you knit? Uh, very small, sort of like uh, bibbies, sort of things, like bibs. Bibs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, like baby jumpers, like bibs. Oh, okay. Yeah, little baby sort of rompery type things. Yeah, that's, that's the word. Yes. Well, that's very impressive. So not only yeah. are you a whiz painter decorator. Yeah. But you can knit. This is just a touch-up job, this one, more. Okay. Just a quick touch-up in the corner. And the radiators, which everybody's probably heard of over the last 16, 17 days. Yes, the they have. The radiators. Yeah. Which are easy. It's lovely paper. Yeah, which was actually hung Money. by Kevin. Look at that. Love that. So I'm just filming this very quick i'm looking at the clock bit to say that that is the end of today's vlog but i'm gonna now go on and talk about books and literature so if you're not interested in that then have a lovely evening and i'll see you tomorrow if you are interested then keep listening watching whatever I'm going to waffle on about books for a bit now, so um, I'm going to keep it in the vlog. I was going to do a separate, a separate little recording about books, and that might be something I look to doing because I love classics and I love books. I have recently found some modern literature that I've been enjoying as well, but. If I were made to choose, my, my hat would be thrown into the classic corner. I just love, love classic literature. I love the way it's written. Um, even if I don't like the stories or the characters, the writing is usually just wonderful to read. So um, yeah, I'm a classics girl. I have just a quick tip. I have two book journals. I started one, the first one about six years ago when I gave myself the task of reading 100 books in four years, I scoured the, um, the many of the different um, top 100 or top 10 classic book lists. So like all the, the major newspapers, the literary houses and so on. And I made myself a list of 100 and challenged myself to read them. I've actually lost that original list, but I think I read about 70 of them. Not within the time frame. It took a bit longer than that because of various ups and downs. And some of the books were long. War and Peace was included and I did read it and I really enjoyed it. Um, apart from maybe some of the military scenes that were a bit dull. <clears throat> Excuse me again, still can't shake off this cold. Um, and I should also say that, where are we? I mix and match between my Kindle and hard copy books. When I read War and Peace, I read it on my Kindle because I do a lot of my reading when I go to bed at night. And there was no way I was going to lay in bed holding, you know, War and Peace, a 1200 page book. It just wasn't going to happen. Um, it's one of the very first Kindles, this, uh, the very first model, you know, version. And the good thing is that classics are more often than not free on Kindle. So if you go on Amazon and search for a book and find it on Kindle. So a lot of the books I've downloaded at the moment, I'm reading Vanity Fair by William Thackeray. And I downloaded that onto Kindle for free. Again, it's another thick book, so I would have it on Kindle to read. So that's a little tip for you. And of course, you can get uh, the Kindle app on your phone, on your iPhone now. <clears throat> so, but by the same token, there ain't nothing can replace a proper book, is there? Uh, quick note, I usually buy paperbacks and I break the spines. Some people will be horrified. My daughter would be horrified. My husband and my son would go, actually, no, does Hannah, I think Hannah might break her. So I've got here you know, a very battered copy of the Canterbury Tales. This is from when I studied it at school. 
um, and it's a translation. But to me, the more battered and dogged the book, the better, because it shows it's been read and loved. And it's, yeah, love that. On the other hand, look at this, see, I came prepared. I have this beautiful, beautiful hardback version of A Christmas Carol and others. I've actually got two copies like this because each year they, I don't know, or every few, few years, look at the gold edging, they bring out uh, different versions of these. The ones in here, I've read some of them. I've read some of the Christmas stories, but every year, every December, I read, reread A Christmas Carol because why wouldn't you? And if you haven't read it, you really should because it's brilliant. <clears throat> so that's those. I um, I like Charles Dickens. He likes his words. Very wordy. Uh, not an easy quick read, but I do enjoy it. I studied Great Expectations for my exams when I was at school. And since then, I've read a variety of them. Um, I've read some of the slightly less well-known ones. A couple of years ago for Christmas, I got Gary just to buy me a selection of classics that he could pick so that I'm always looking to broaden my reading, which is why I chose the list as I did, the 100 books, so that I didn't just veer to the same books again time and time. And Gary bought me Dombey and Son, which is, again, another really thick tome by Dickens. And I waded through that um, and it was okay. It was, it was Dickens. It was, it was a good story. Characters weren't particularly appealing. Uh, I've read The Old Curiosity Shop, which again, I felt a little disappointed with because that was one I thought might be um, really good. And I think I wrote in my in my journal that I didn't actually re understand why it was called the Old Curiosity Shop because um, very little of it is set there. Um, but there you go. Um, and there's some other Dickens I've read. Um, <clears throat> another author, and again, these are all mostly English authors, George Eliot, who wrote Mill on the Floss, which is a book that... <sighs> Sorry, I've got Henry now coming on to the attention. It's a book that um, I've got on my to-read list. I've bought the book. It's upstairs ready to go. I recently read Silas Marner. And I have... Oh, look at that. The other good thing about classics is even if you buy them in print, they're usually quite cheap unless they're in a, like a TV series version. Silas Marner is lovely. I recommend it. Um... If you haven't heard of George Eliot, she's an English, uh, she, an English writer. I believe her real name was Mary Ann Evans, but I could be talking off the top of my head there. And she writes about rural England. And there's Hannah back in a minute. So forgive the interruption. That was um, Hannah coming home from uni and then Kevin, brother-in-law Kev came around to do some painting, so I'm now back hoping to fit a quick more, uh, quick bit more of this in um, before Gary comes home and we have dinner. Both the dogs are chewing bones, so my apologies, but it does keep them out my face. So I'm grateful for that. No, and he's just dropped one. So she might knock the table. No, she's gonna be good. Okay, so we were talking, or I was just talking about um, Silas Marner. George Eliot, it's quite a short book. I checked, it is Marianne Evans, but George Eliot will always be found in the classics section. And it's lovely, it's it's just a really nice story, that one. <clears throat> um, so I'm very wary of not making this too long. Like I said, I've put it on the end of the vlog, but I might do, if, people are, if you're interested, say below and I'll do a separate a separate little um, segment. You know, I do a half hour sit down podcast and talk about it properly if, if enough people are interested because I could talk about it forever. You know, I could talk about everything forever. Uh, Thomas Hardy is another author that I have read. Um, 
Uh, what did I read? Far From The Madden Crowd, I think was the one. No, it wasn't that one. Maybe it was. I can't remember. I need to look it up. The one I did read of his, uh, Jude the Obscure, I read. And, oh my goodness, did that upset me. <laughs> I've not met anybody who really liked the book. And the book was fine. The ending is awful and really depressing. And I then thereafter vowed not to read Thomas Hardy again. So, um, you know, it's up to you if you want to read it. Um, just be warned about that one. Uh, Virginia Woolf, I have, who is obviously much more 20th century. I've uh, read, we live near Charleston Farmhouse, which is where the Bloomsbury set uh, lived, where Virginia's sister, Vanessa Bell lived. Virginia Woolf lived over near Lewis uh, in a place called, I believe it's called the Monk, Monk's House. Um, I read Mrs. Dalloway, again, too many weeks of my life I won't get back. Didn't like it at all. Uh, so, and it was only a thin book, so that got a, a black mark. However, on to the books that I love. Um, I've written them down here. Oh, we have to talk about the Brontes, don't we? So we have Charlotte, Emily and Anne. Charlotte Bronte obviously wrote Jane Eyre, which most people, unless you've been living under a rock for the last hundred years, will have heard of. There's been countless television adaptations and films. I read the book. I don't, I don't rave about it as much as a lot of people do. I don't find Jane Eyre herself particularly inspiring, but it's, it's an enjoyable book. Um, I much preferred The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, which was written by James, uh, Charlotte's sister, sorry, Anne Bronte. And The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, I thoroughly enjoyed, really liked that. Um, and then moving on to Charlotte Bronte, because I wanted to read books written by all three of them. Of course, I read Wuthering Heights. We have that as a standing joke in our house because I was getting Hannah to read it as well when we were homeschooling and she absolutely hated it. Absolutely hated it. She has since tried to read it again a couple of times, but I don't think she's ever finished it. I, on the other hand, loved it. It's very bleak, very dark. It's not easy to read because she uses, one of the servants in particular, talks in a very dialectical manner. Um, and it's hard work reading what he's saying, but I, I, I just loved it. Uh, really liked it for all its um, darkness. So yeah, the Brontes, obviously can wholeheartedly recommend you. When I went to Yarndale, I was really, really hoping to visit Haworth, which is where they lived in the Bronte Parsonage and it was just up the road, but I never got there, which was a real shame, but you know, another time. Let me look at my notes. Oh, of course, Jane Austen, the other um, <clears throat> English um, author. Jane Austen, we all, we all know, don't we? Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion, Northanger Abbey, uh, Emma. So my favorite one was, I believe, let me check in my, I read most of them during those, those however many years it was I was reading. There we go, Northanger Abbey, love it. And before I read this, I never realized what a sense of humor Jane Austen had. Uh, her books are so witty. Uh, the characters, if you've read Pride and Prejudice, or at least even seen the film or the TV adaptation, characters like Mr. Collins and um, um, Lizzie and, and Jane's mum. Oh, I forgot the name, brain meltdown now. Anyway, um, just absolutely brilliant and comical. Um, Jane Austen has quite a a, a shrewd and perceptive sense of humour about her her time and the, the age she was writing. So I highly recommend Northanger Abbey. I enjoyed Emma, but I did find that she got on my nerves. Uh, Persuasion, I found a little bit slow. 
And I have to say, Pride and Prejudice, I've seen so many adaptations of television and screen that I haven't read the book and I really should. So, Bennett. <laughs> Mrs. Bennett, of course it is. Um, Mrs. Bennett, uh, the mum of the five daughters in Pride and Prejudice. Wow. I can't believe I forgot that. Well, I can. I forget things. Um, there was a sequel. Somebody wrote, P.D. James wrote um, that her kind of sequel, spin-off to Pride and Prejudice called Death Comes to Pemberley several years ago. And it was big hype. And it was actually done as a television adaptation, which I didn't watch, but I read the book, really didn't enjoy it. And in my book review, in my book log, I put, actually, I didn't care who committed the murder because I thought it was such a rubbishy book, which is a shame because although I haven't read any P.D. James previously, I gather, you know, she is a, a you know, well-established, world-class author. But I think it's very dodgy when people try to pick up where another author has left off. The only, uh, the one I've read that was really, um, really worked in my opinion was when Anthony Horowitz wrote another, a new Sherlock Holmes mystery. And I can't remember what it was called. It's in my book. Shall we have a look? I think it's under H for Horowitz. We've got Huckleberry Finn. No, it's not in here. Well, that's a bit lame, isn't it? I'll look it up anyway. Um, it was quite a dark novel, but it was so much in the style of Conan Doyle. I read, I again, on the Kindle, I had the complete works of Conan Doyle, and I've read quite a few of the Sherlock Holmes stories, even the shorter ones that you know, haven't been televised. Um, and I really, really enjoy his writing. And reading the Anthony Horowitz version was really... Oh, excuse me. Oh, um, could have been reading Conan Doyle. And it was also um, endorsed by the estate of Conan Doyle. So that was definitely worthwhile. I've got upstairs, actually, I've got a book that I bought recently that is a Poirot book. So somebody, and I can't remember the author, she's picked up the mantle from Agatha Christie and has written another Poirot mystery. So that will be interesting to read, to see how that um, comes out. Oh, I'm yawning. Oh, I'm probably boring myself now. Um, what else in my book? One's Three Men in a Boat, Jerome K. Jerome. Laugh out loud funny. Really, really good. Good writing. The story, if you don't know it, of these, these um, two sort of I want to say dilettante males um, who are uh, in a boat, uh, sorry, three dilettante males. Of course, I was thinking about the dog, but of course the dog is the fourth um, um, animal. And that was really good. And that's a short read. In fact, oh, I've still got loads I could talk about. Mary Shelley, Frankenstein absolutely brilliant one of the best books i've ever ever read um mary shelley who was married to the poet shelley and this came about again i read this uh the the background to this a while ago shelley and his wife mary shelley and i want to say coleridge but i could be wrong um they were on holiday in italy and um, there was really, really bad thunderstorm. So to pass the time, they made up horror stories to tell each other. And that's where, where um, the story of Frankenstein came from. She, she came up with that story and it is really good. And without being too book snobby, the, the depth of it, and as this is just for Gary, the breadth and the depth, and the length of the story um, is, is just brilliant. And the emotions it stirs up when you're reading it, you don't know whether to love or to hate the monster, um, to hate the people who created it, or it, it's really well written and compelling. So I really recommend that one to you. Have I got any more down by my side? No, 
I think for now that was it. Uh, the other one I was going to talk about briefly was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Hated it. I found the heroine who actually is never named. Um, I found her really irritating. What a wet blanket. And she didn't stir up any feelings of sympathy for me at all. Um, she just wound me up. These things, maybe that says something about us when these heroines um, really don't tick the boxes. Not sure. But in my opinion, she got what she deserved. <laughs> so, anyway, did any of you watch Jack and Ori? Any British viewers watch Jack and Ori? I feel like I'm, I'm in my big chair doing the Jack and Ori thing. That's my thought on some books. I have got many, many more much more um i've got many more slightly um off mainstream reads that i have read that are just brilliant and i've got some more slightly excuse me again slightly less commonly read classics that i would love to share with you so if you're still with me at this point we're 12 minutes i'm going to put this in at the end pretty much unedited but as I say, if you've got anything to share or you've read any of the books that I've talked about and you agree or disagree, do comment. It would be really good fun to see what different people think, um, whether or not you think you might read one of them. I did talk about David Copperfield a while back and one of the you lovely ladies, I wrote it down, I've left it, I think it was Maida, said she's ordered David Copperfield on audiobook. So I'd love to know what you think um, of that. And yeah, let's see, you can, I will be completely at your whim if you want to carry the chat on. I can tag it on to the end of some of the vlogs and we can carry on talking. And that way people who aren't interested in, in what I've got to say or in literature can just, you know, they can um, turn it off, can't they? The joy of technology. So that's all from me uh, this time. I'm going to go now and start editing the rest of the vlog and I will see you next time.